Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all having a lovely evening. So today I'd like to discuss something that really has nothing to do with consumer electronics repair, right to repair, the news, or anything I usually discuss in this channel, and that is why I believe you should avoid people that try to take you away from your support system in any way, shape, or form. Now, when I say support system, everybody's going to have their own idea of what that is. For you, it may be family. For others, it may be friends. For some people, it just may be random people that they hang out with in IRC. Whoever it is that you share the personal details of your life with that then give you advice that you take into consideration when making life decisions. Whoever that group of people are for you, that's what I'm talking about here. There are people that will use the guise of privacy and say, I don't want you sharing with them because of privacy. And... Sometimes you may think, oh, I may have done something wrong by sharing. And what's been my, what I've found time and time again is that the people that do that are usually people who are trying to separate me from my support system because they know that in some way, shape, or form they are manipulating me and taking advantage of me. I talk about manipulation in this old video that I did about seven years ago. And when people manipulate you, it's very, very easy for your head to get completely twisted up and for you to forget your own ideals. Because the way manipulation works, as I explained in this video, is you don't get from here to here. You get from here to here, okay, that makes sense. You get from here to here, okay, makes sense. You get from here to here, oh, I can kind of see that. You get from here to here, oh, yeah, makes sense. (laughs) And then by the time you, wait, how the fuck I wind up over here? I used to be over here. This makes no sense. It's very easy. And what friends are going to do with your friends and your family or whoever it is in in your life that's part of your support system is going to do, they're going to go, yo, you're over here. Go back over here where you belong. They're going to yank you out of whatever it is that you managed to get yourself um, mind-fucked into. And it's important that they be there. I want to give a couple of examples of this because I think it'll, it'll better demonstrate my point. Fifteen years ago, I was an intern at a recording studio in the city, and I eventually got promoted to actually being an employee. So if I was there, if I was doing a session, if I was, you know, setting up rehearsal rooms or anything like that, I was getting paid at that point because I was now officially a worker. I had moved on from being an intern after, you know, several months of interning for free for 40 to 80 hours a week. I was also working at another studio called Avatar that I started as an intern at, and then I became an official, um, tech, you know, junior technician there for the High, high pay of $7.50 an hour back in the day. And I would, I would split my time between the two. Now, one of the co-owners of the smaller studio, not Avatar, the smaller one, asked if I would help out with a session one night. And he knew that that was a night that I worked at Avatar for money. And I said, okay, sure, I can be there for it. I show up to help him out with the session. He gets paid for his session. I don't get paid at all. He said, yeah, I asked you to help. I didn't say you were here to work. You know, I didn't say, you know, you were an intern. And I was like, yeah, I was an intern, but I'm not anymore. I now get paid every single time I do a session. Every time you ask me to come here to set up a rehearsal studio or something like that, that's the way this works. And then he kind of started bringing up how I wasn't 110% ready yet and this, that, and the other and trying to make me feel like I wasn't as good uh, at what I did. And admittedly, I wasn't. Again, this guy was in his 70s. He had over 50 years of experience, platinum records, and I was an 18-year-old kid. And I didn't, you know, I felt pissed, but I didn't really know the right that I had to feel pissed. It wasn't until I spoke to people that were in my support network that I realized that I'm getting screwed over. He 110% knew that I was broke. He 100% knew that I took off paying work specifically to do this. He 100% knew that I was no longer an intern, and he didn't care. He just came up with every single excuse in the book, and this is something that this dude used to do. He used to try to you know, beat you down on your self-confidence to make you feel like you weren't worth money and then try to get you to do stuff for free. And once I actually spoke to other people, I realized there's really no reason for me to be on the fence regarding being angry about this. I 100% reserve the right to be angry about this and to demand my fucking money. Uh, that, and especially since it wasn't even that much money to begin with. Like, we're talking about 30 bucks here, dude. But the... Um, which sadly at the time actually mattered to me a great deal, more than it does now. But my, back to my point, in that when it came out that I was, um, when it came out that I had spoken to a friend about this, he was incredibly mad. He said, you know, you know, you shouldn't be talking to other people that don't work here about private studio business. We care about privacy. We value privacy. And the thing is, I don't think the, that privacy was the thing that he really cared about. I think what he cared about is the fact that he knew that what he was doing was manipulation. And he knew that if anybody cared about me that had any sense of self-respect for themselves and respect for me as a human being, that they were going to shake me and say, Lewis, you have a right to be mad about this. Lewis, here's why this is not right. You have a skill set. You're good at, you know, you're decent at what you do. Even if you weren't decent at what you do, he has the right to say, I'm going to find somebody that is good at what they do rather than try to trick you and are not paying you. He could have said up front, by the way, I'm not paying you. So that he, there's a reason he didn't do that because he knew if he did, you probably wouldn't show up because he had other paying work. And uh, again, when you go to a store and they're hiring people, they'll usually say, help wanted. And they pay the help. 
That, that is what help means when you're an employer. Uh, you know, so I would spoken to several friends that just you know, kind of lectured me on this, and I realized that I got screwed. And the reason that he did not want me to speak to other people is because he knew what he was doing. In his heart of hearts, he knew that if I talked to 99 out of 100, not even friends, but random people, they will tell me that what he was doing was shady-ass shit. However, if I don't talk to anybody, I'm only going to listen to him, and I'll get manipulated. Because I'll start here. He wants me to be here. He's not going to tell me to go here. He's just going to... Bring me here, and then I'm here. Okay. Then he's going to say something else. Bring me here, then I'm here. He's going to say something else, say something else, and then I'll be all the way over here. What friends do, what family members do, what people that care about you do, what they do is when you get dragged from here to over here, they go, yo, I, I, want, you, I want to show you something. He's trying to bring you over here. Don't go. That's what your friends and your family members are going to do. They're going to point out the path that you're on. They're going to point, point out the shit that you don't see, and they're going to make sure you don't get there. Another example that I'll give is... Um, this was me being a dumbass uh, with a girl as a teenager. This was, I was dating somebody that was oh, considerably older than me. I was a teenager. This, I was completely being a stupid. Just absolutely uh, had it just felt like, yeah, this is just me being an absolute moron. And um, so there was a person that wanted a certain level of emotional and sexual intimacy out of me, yet they did not want to call what they were doing dating or a relationship. And I would try to set a boundary. And I'd say, okay, listen, you know, that's great. I appreciate it. This is not going to work for me. Bye. And anytime I would do that, this particular person would start crying and saying, no, please, I care about you, no, and then take their clothes off. And again, oh, I, was a teen, <laughs> I was a teenage male, so this, this, this sadly worked. And, uh, and at one point, I remember telling one of my friends about the, this pseudo relationship and this you know, dumbass thing I got myself into. And he tells me, okay, listen, why? So you set a boundary, and then you immediately erased your boundary. For what reason? There's, there's a reason that this person does not want a relationship with you. There's a reason that this person does not want to call what they're doing dating. There's a reason that this person does not want to call this thing uh, anything other than what, 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 because there's probably something going on. And I know what you're thinking, Lewis. You're probably thinking, I got to figure out what it is. And no, you don't. You, what you simply have to do is go, okay, that doesn't work for me. I don't need to figure out why it is that you act in this way that you would typically act with somebody that you're seeing, but that with somebody that you're not seeing, there's probably something else going on there, and you're going to figure it out in a miserable way if you don't leave. So go. And which was literally the, the best advice I could have possibly ever gotten. This is somebody that had wound up going through my emails because this person didn't believe that I was not looking at other women in spite of the fact that they did not want to call what they were doing a relationship, so I don't even understand why they would think they have the right to. And simultaneously, I remember going home that day, falling asleep, waking up, and then there's another dude in my apartment. I'm like, that was it. Like, that, that was literally... I'm not even going to get into the rest of it, but like, needless to say, both of them were tossed the fuck out of there. And uh, my friend was 110% uh, correct about the entire thing. And this person was not particularly happy that I had spoken to my... Who was, at the time, my best friend. Now, I personally think that it is... That you're... Be, that it's... it's um, if you are... Um, how about this? Engaging in any sort of romantic behavior with the opposite sex, that it's kind of implied that your best friend is going to have some idea of what you're doing. Again, your employees, no. Your boss, no. You know, random people you meet in the street, no. Your best friend, yes. And part of the reason, I believe, in my opinion, this person did not was really, really mad that I had spoken to my best friend about it is because I think she knew that what she was doing was wasting my time, stringing me along, and fucking with my head. And that anybody that has respect for themselves and also respect for me is going to look at me and say, Louis... What the hell are you doing? You know that you're better than this. You should be, go again, stop. You've gotten yourself into a mess. Why? Why are, you, like, why are you torturing yourself? Go find somebody else who is actually going to be open to saying that they are dating you. Go find somebody else. Or, and if, when you create a boundary, Lewis, you create it, and you do not remove the boundary simply because, I don't know, the person's hot and you're a horny teenager. But point being, there is a, and there, this person was 110% correct because, A, uh, my, my, my friend was 110% correct because, A, this person went through my email, and, B, this person brought another dude to my fucking apartment, which, again, needless to say, there's some things that just don't fucking belong as a full story on YouTube. But there's a, re there's a reason, because she knew that something was up. The women that I've been with, that I've had healthy relationships with, further, and the bosses that I've had at jobs that were good jobs, they didn't care. 
if my best friend knew what I was doing at work. And they didn't care if my best friend knew about the dynamic of our relationship because they, those people were people that were not screwing with me. They knew that they were not messing with me. They weren't trying to exploit me. They weren't trying to take something from me. They weren't trying to do something that was inappropriate. And as a result of it, they were totally fine with my friends or family members or anybody else knowing the details. The people that are typically not okay with this are the people that are trying to get something out of you. There was one example that uh, is a... Um... Hi, Oreo. Oh, you're so cute, but you're out of frame. Come on, get up a little. There's another example. I keep a journal, and I actually write in my journal on a regular basis. The reason I write in my journal on a regular basis is because one of the things I've said on this channel is it's really easy to lie to yourself. It's very easy to lie to yourself, and one of the ways that I catch myself when I lie to myself is when I write. When I write, I realize, like, wait a second, why am I phrasing what I'm saying about my day in this PR-friendly way? And sometimes I'll look back at my older ones and realize when I've lied to myself and then correct it. It also allows me to realize when I'm... Um, when I, I have an irrational thought process. If I read back what I wrote and I go, this sounds crazy, sometimes it takes two weeks for me to realize that a thought process that I had is crazy, but I need to actually have it written down in order to understand that, in order to, have it me in order to really have memorize the thought process. And there was a person that I said, I don't, like, I don't like the idea that I'm in your journal. It's like, a, I'm not even talking to other people. I'm talking to a book <laughs> that's locked up. That, like, that's, uh, which I thought, and that was a person that had, not going to discuss on this channel at any point in time, but that was massively, massively fucking with my head, like beyond messing with my head. And everybody that I know that cares about me told me that that's exactly what was, uh, what was happening and that I should just stop, just cut it off and stop. People that care about you want you to have your support system. I want my employees to let anybody that is their friend or family member or whatever know everything that goes on at this business. I don't care. I want them to be able to feel free to say, here's how much I get paid, here's how much I work, here's what people talk about here, here's how we're treated, and so on and so forth. Because I don't have anything to hide. I'm not like trying to pull the wool over their eyes or screw them in any way. Sometimes they may get a little shortchanged because their boss is a shitty business owner, but at the end of the day, I, I, I stand behind the way that they're treated and I stand behind the environment that we have here. I'm not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes and I'm not trying to hide anything. Therefore, I don't care if they talk to their friends or their family member or write in a journal what it's like to work here. Further, in my relationships, if I'm with somebody, if I'm just, whether I'm dating them, whether they're my girlfriend or whether they're my wife, I have no problem with that person discussing with their best friend or their mom or their dad the inner workings of our relationship. Now, don't get me wrong. If, you know, I, I tell them some really embarrassing um, secret or something from childhood that's really sensitive and then she goes to work and just tells everybody around the water cooler about it, okay, that's kind of fucked up. But that's a different thing and I think we know what that is. I'm really curious from all of you. Have you ever been with somebody in uh, whether we're talking about a friend whether we're talking about a business relationship or whether we're talking about a romantic partner that has tried to separate you from your support system what was that like and did that end well or did that end poorly I would guess that for most of you in that situation that it ended poorly. And I would suggest that you look at this as a red flag. Again, whether it's business, whether it's a friendship, or whether it's a romantic relationship. When somebody tries to pull out your support system from you, always ask why. Always try to figure out why that is. Because again, manipulation, it's very easy for even really intelligent people to get manipulated. Because you know, again, people wonder, how did you, how'd you get from here to here? One step at a time. That's it for today. And as always, hope you learned something. You are so cute. Oh my God, you're so cute. Look at you. You're adorable. Anyway, see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye now.